I'm just thankful that God does supply. And he knew that need. He knew the need that Wichita Falls had. And, you know, we happen to have a good guy to send over there and bless them with that. Do I hate seeing him go? Absolutely. But do I know that it was a coming thing? Sure, God, I'm not surprised by this. I'm not surprised because you know what? He has a heart after ministry, and those people need someone to help them. And God knows they need it because we've lived there long enough. We have lived there long enough, long enough. You know, all these rains the last few days here and what's happened, you know, over in the Carolinas and on the eastern seaboard, I, 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 I'm amazed at the resilience of our country. You know, I, these are just some pictures that I pulled off. These are not from some other place, and these are not from some other time. These are as recent as two days ago, these pictures that I'm taking a look at. Two days, still getting large amounts of rain. These streets are still flooded like this. I'm, I'm just absolutely overtaken by the fact that this can happen in our country. I'm, I'm just amazed at what goes on. It just is absolutely crazy. But I will tell you this. It does remind me of a story, a tale that I heard one time about a guy who was living in a flooded area and it was flooding and it was getting worse and the water was rising. And he got up on the roof of his house and he prayed, said, Lord, rescue me. You remember the story. And almost like immediately following that, here comes this guy in a canoe and he says, do you need help? He says, no, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. A couple minutes later, there comes by somebody with a big one of these big fan boats, you know, like we see down in Louisiana and stuff like that. It comes sailing right on by. I said, hey, 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 you up there on the roof, do you need some help? No, no, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay. Rod is still rising, guy's still praying, and suddenly a helicopter comes by and it says, Megahorn, do you need help? Do you, do you need some help? No, no, I'm, I'm okay. Three times God answered his prayer and he didn't know what to do with it when it happened. You know, I, I believe that we can earnestly be praying and asking God for something and God provide and we not even recognize it. I want us to take a look at a story. It's, it's one of my very favorite stories because it, it, it shows the compassion that God has for all of us. That doesn't mean just us who know him. It also means all the people that don't know him. Uh, it's a story here that's found, well, first off, let's take a look at this because this is the reason why we have that story. It says, for God so loved what? World. Just those that know him? No. No. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever out of that world that would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I will tell you something. The world needs to know. They're crying out, folks. They're crying out for help. They just don't realize the help is right there. They don't. I know people that this week, I got a call this morning from from somebody says, can you give me a ride? I said, well, you gave me no time to make plans. I could have done that had I known earlier. I would have been glad to. I said, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Have you tried this? No, no, no. I said, well, you need to, need to, need to. Sometimes we are in such a fix, and I say that in the fact because we're, it's not in a fix yet. We're in such a problem that we don't see the real answer. We don't see it. So let's take a look here. This story is, is coming from the book of John as well. It's a little later. It says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festi festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the what gate? Sheep gate. This is not an attractive place. This is not a place where you just think about, oh, I want to go here today. Because if you've ever been to the state fair and gone out into the, you know, here it starts this next weekend, if you've ever gone out in the livestock area, you'll know what that was probably smelling like. And it just does, you know, they don't have scoops and they don't have people cleaning up. And this is just not going to be a good place. But it says, now near the sheep gate, there was a pool in which an Aramaic is called Bethesda. And that in the Hebrew term says pool of healing, a pool of healing, in which is surrounded by five colonnades. This is not a small place. And so what you've got to realize is that there's a lot of people here. By five covered colonnades, and there is a number of disabled people 
used to lie around. Now, I'll, I'll, this is what it looks like today. This is what they say is the, the pool of Bethesda, this area. And uh, this is probably what it looked like at one point in time, but because it went through a lot of disrepair, people weren't repairing this because there were other pools that were being created. Romans were creating better places, more elaborate places, and they didn't come back to this place. And so it fell into ruins, and this is what another picture of it might look like. But all these sick people were laid around outside this little place. And it says, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been there an invalid for how many years? Can you imagine being laid in, the public, in a public space for 38 years? I mean, half my lifetime, I can't imagine just being laid down on a hard surface. This isn't like lounge chairs. We're talking about rock. Now probably they had some, you know, some blankets or some kind of cloth that they were laying on, but I can't imagine laying out there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. Now, you know, I, I think about that. Jesus might be walking through one of those colonnades and he looked and he saw this guy laying there. And I, I know that God loves this world. I know he does. Because these people who this event is happening for don't even know who God is. Don't know. <laughs> Jesus is there. He said, and he asked him, sir, do you want to get well? Do you need help? Like from that helicopter, from that canoe, from that airplane. Do you need help? Sir? The invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. So here's what we got. We got this angel that comes and stirs the water. I want you to think about the compassion of God for a group of people who have no clue who he is. But he sees the need that's present and he sends this angel down to stir the water and the first one that gets in, it's like immediately taking that step when you see the opportunity. It's not to say, well, I, do I want to get in there or not? You see, I think when we hesitate, we miss God. When he sends the boat by, we shouldn't say, oh, no, it's not really the way I wanted it to happen. You see, I'm expecting this big ship to come by. When in reality, it might not be that big ship. But is God doing the saving? Yes, he is. Is God taking care of you? Yes, he is. So here's this stirring of the water. And you know, and Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And when? At once. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked away. You know, I think when we realize that Jesus is there in our lives wanting to meet the needs that we have, he is not, he's not slow to do what we ask him to do. The Bible says that God has ears to hear, and he hears our prayer, and we have that confidence that he hears us when we pray. He's not too busy. He's not off doing other things, taking care of other people. The God that we have is omnipresent. That means that He is everywhere at all times at, for all people. So here's Jesus reaching out His hand to him. And, I, you know, it doesn't say that He sat there and thought about it. Well, who is this guy? He had no clue who this man was. The Bible says, doesn't say anything about He had previous knowledge of this man. He didn't have any knowledge. But He just heard that word, get up, and pick up your mat. You know, and, I, and I, 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 I sit there and I wonder how many people in our community God has come by to touch their lives and they don't know it. Don't know it. They're in pain. Our community is hurting. 
Doug and I were talking about it this morning. We've got an administration that has signed off every bad bill for the LGBT community since he's been in office. Every bad thing that could happen, he has signed up. Let him go. Our folks don't recognize that we serve a God that's higher than the presidency of this country. And they still choose, for most part, to, to think that they have to settle for sitting around saying, God will send me some help sometime. You know, I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying God will send me some help. You know what? Help comes from above, and that doesn't mean the highest office in this country. But here's Jesus, and he just reaches out his hand, and the guy didn't think about it at all. But I want you to think about those words, do you want to get well? You know, I, Kathy knows for a long time, she's worked with enough people in, in nursing homes. There are a lot of people in nursing homes that you think are ill because they're in a nursing home but they're not ill. They live there because that's the place they've chosen to live. Now, I don't know if you've ever been visiting, Kathy and I have, visiting nursing homes, and you go from one room to the next, and, and the people are real sweet, and they're so glad to see you because no one's been to see them in like forever. And so they're very welcoming, they're very loving, and they, want, they just want to be touched. They just want someone to care enough about them to come see them. But one of the things that I think is interesting, and Kathy could probably vouch for this, is that it doesn't take very long for them to tell you everything that's wrong with them. It's like a smorgasbord of things. They begin to go right down the list. If you've got old grandparents and things like that, when you go to see them, Oh, they're quick to tell you, oh, now my arthritis, it just hurts so bad. And they begin to enumerate all the things that are wrong with them. You know, because sick people, when they get together, that's what they do. My pain is more hurting than yours is. They just begin to try to one-up on everybody else so that their pain is hurting more than yours is. You know, my little toe is, this toe really hurts. I don't care how bad your cancer is. My little toe really hurts. They really don't care because it's all about them. Jesus could walk by. You be all about yourself. He says, get up from that sorrow, from all of that junk in your life, and get up. Oh, but I have nobody to help me. So you can go through all of the excuses that you want to stay where you're at and you can blame everybody else we can blame the president we could blame congress we could blame everybody but you know what i believe that god meets my needs beyond that beyond that i think my god is well able to do more than that it says that it was in the sheep market. We talked about the fact that it wasn't a great place to be, but yet people stayed there for years. People stay in the condition that they live in for a long time, not realizing that there is a way out, because pretty soon they lived there so long, that is the way of life. When you talk to people in nursing homes, if you took them out, they wouldn't know how to live, would not know how to survive. But one of the things that I love about having had my life, no matter how bad certain parts of it were, I got the opportunity. How many would know the name Catherine Kuhlman? When I was at ORU and I was traveling with Oral, he invited Catherine Kuhlman to come to the Maybe Center and have a, have a healing service. And uh, World Action, we're going to get to be the music along with Jimmy, you know, I can't remember Jimmy's last name, and uh, Dino Kartsanakis, who's always on the piano, and all, all the people that normally came. Uh, she had asked World Action because it was kind of the thing to do because it was in their building. And we got to go back into the prayer room with Catherine Kuhlman before she went on. And that was one of the most 
wonderful, inspiring places I've ever been in my whole life. I've been in that room before, but I've never been in that room with somebody who was so in touch with God. For people that she had no clue of who were coming. She was back out there and she was saying, God, I don't want, I'm not going on there till I know that you're here. And the choir would sing. Somebody would come back and they'd say, you ready? No, not ready. The choir would sing another song. There's lots of music, lots and lots of music. Have you ever been to one of her crusades? It was wonderful, powerful music. And there would be that moment when she says, I'm ready. And if you've ever saw, seen pictures of her, she's about 110 pounds, dripping wet. And she wore these glass, uh, they, well, they weren't glass, they were like plexiglass shoes, but it looked like they were clear. You could see through them. And they had a little heel to them. And she would kind of, it was almost ethereal. She would like float out on the stage. And she'd give a short, very, very short message and she would point that long finger of hers up into the far balcony and she said, someone is just being healed up here and she'd begin to call it out. People who didn't know God at all were being healed. Just like this scenario right here, people who had no idea the compassion that God has for his kids who know nothing about him, but how God wants to heal their lives, to touch them. And I sat there and I, I wept because these people came with such anticipation because they were in such great need. They were at such a place that the doctors had all given up hope. There was nothing else. They were at the end of the street and there was nowhere else to go. These people that were laying around this thing, there weren't doctors that this guy could go to. Wasn't a place. Matter of fact, it wasn't even in a waiting room that you'd really want to be waiting in because this is the place where people brought their sheep to drink water from too. The blind. I think about the blind people. They were just dropped off because we don't have time to take care of you. I think about the people in our community who have been ousted by their families because they don't want to have anything to do with them either. God is stirring that water. You know, when, when I think about all of these people, it was the first to jump in. Those people had to be watching. They were, they were waiting. They, were, they had heard, and they had been there, and they had missed, and they were waiting. And like this guy, he says, you know what? I'm con I, I've conceded that I will never make it because I don't have anybody to help me. I believe that there's people in our community that are exactly like that. I believe that there are people who, because they don't know how much God loves them, have conceded to accept what people have told them. You're going to hell. Well, I guess I'm going. I don't have anybody else to help me change that. I, you know. Nobody has certainly come along to tell me anything different. So I guess that's just, this is just where I'm going to be. This is it for me. Just like him. 38 years. There are people in our community that are growing up hearing such bad news and will hear it and will hear it and hear it their whole lives. Unless somebody tells them different. Unless somebody says, you know what? God loves you just the way you are. He will touch your life just because He loves you. Not because you're so good or so great or you've got this or that or you look like this or that. I've got a six pack, you just can't see it. I've worked hard to cover it up. We don't care what you look like. God doesn't care because God loves you because you are His child. His child. I still remember those words though. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? I remember at a time, and I've told this story before, it's been a long time, 
But my in-laws were in the healing ministry, and we would oftentimes have prayer lines, and they would go forever. And so when my former wife and I were together, we, were, we would go along and pray with people too. And I got to this lady who was in a wheelchair, and I prayed for her, and I said, now get up. And she did. Well, I'm thinking it's just like my grandmother. My grandmother got around in a wheelchair because it was easier for us to roll her around than it was for us to, okay, Granny, come on, come on. It was just easier for mobility. We would just roll her around. It was easier. Well, she got out of the wheelchair, and her daughter, who had brought her, just started dancing all over the place. Because her mother hadn't walked in like 10 years. See, I didn't think anything about it because she reminded me of my grandmother, who I knew could walk, but simply used a wheelchair to get around. So I assumed that she could walk just like my grandmother could, but chose to use a wheelchair just because it was easier. I didn't think anything about it because I knew that she could walk because I had seen it. You've got people around you who need to know that God will touch their life because he touched yours. They need to know that no matter how long and how hard it's been, do you want to change this or not? Do you, want to, do you want to get up and move on away from this bad place? Do you want to get out of that poverty? Do you want to get out of that poverty thing? Well, my family was broke and I was broke. I guess we'll always be broke. With that thinking, you will always be broke. But when you hear that, you know what? That's not what God wants for you. God wants you well. God wants you prosperous. He came and became poor, left all of God's glory in heaven, came to this earth to be a person, a man, woman, just like us, just to walk as a human being. He came to earth, became poor, so that we, through him, might become rich. That's what the Word of God says. He doesn't want us feeling like we're that guy left by the pool that no one cares about, all we got to do is talk about what, how bad things are. And you know our community, they really talk about what's bad. They'll tell you all the bad stuff you want to hear. Pretty soon you have to say, oh, I've heard enough. <laughs> talk to the head, because I don't want to hear anymore. This is just so bad, and it, just, it gets worse. But do you want to get well? Do you want to change that or not? You see, I, I just think a lot of times that people just don't want to get well. I just don't think they do. On the day which this took place was the Sabbath. It was, a, it was a worship day. So the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, is it the Sabbath? <laughs> they already knew that. The law forbids you to carry your mat. Can you imagine Here's this guy who's been on this bed for 38 years. You would think that there would be a little shouting going on, a little dancing going on. But no, 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 no. What they have to do is come in and take away from that and start to pull that guy. Try to pull him back down, put him back in the place where he was just because they didn't like it, just because it happened and they didn't do it. It wasn't because of them. It's the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. We don't have to listen to all that's around us that might try to keep us from doing the things that God wants us to do because we don't fit their mold. Because I'll guarantee you, there's not going to be anybody from First Baptist Church down on the crossroads of Throckmorton and Cedar Springs telling people that God loves them. There will not be anybody like that from that church. But there might be one of us down there just saying God loves you. What? Really? Could it be true? Could the water be moving for me? Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was before or after. The compassion of God in his son walking on this earth, Jesus didn't even care that he knew who he was. I think that's amazing. For Jesus had slipped away in the crowd that was there. He wasn't after all that. That angel that was sent to stir the water had no recognition. We just know it's an angel. Jesus came to stir the water in that man's heart, in his life. And where does Jesus live right now? He's in you. And he's waiting on you to stir the waters in somebody else's life, to see their need, to see their situation, and to say, you know what? Do you want to get better? There's a way out of this. You don't have to live like this anymore. Because I know somebody that can help you. You know, I'm just tired of excuses from so many people. You know, one of the excuses is I don't have someone to help me. You know what? Our community does need help. Is there somebody to help? Yeah, we've got somebody right here. We don't have to go very far. There are people here that can help. Uh, I didn't know that that's all I had to do. People don't realize to become a child of God and to know him intimately like we know him is nothing more than just asking Jesus to come live in my heart. That is such a hard thing to say. It's not. But can it change a person's life? In an instant. In an instant it can. I heard that God doesn't love me. Then that's, There's lots of that going around. You know what? Sometimes people don't know the truth. But it is the truth you know that will set you free. And the Bible says that God loves you. The Bible says that God loves you. The power that supersedes other powers says he loves you. Why would he do that for me? Why would, care? Why would God care? God has shown through the ages Jesus has been that symbol that God has cared for uh, his creation from the beginning of time. Continues to be that symbol that he loves us constantly, ever vescently, just bubbling all the time. That water is always moving because he loves us so much. The only thing they need to hear is this. For God so loved the world. And we're a part of it. They're a part of it. I want to encourage you, you know, sometimes just one word at a moment when a person's life looks or feels like or to them seems like the bottom is falling out of it and there's nobody around to help catch, sometimes it's just grabbing their hand. Do you want something else do you need something else doesn't take much doesn't take much father god we love you father we've all experienced that stirring of the water in our life every one of us some points in time have been easy some points in times for other people it's been a desire a, a dire situation come upon them that that you were the, you were the last choice because they didn't know anybody else to call on. But God, you don't care how we come to you. You just want us to come to you. Father, some of us just need to turn around and start running towards you. Because you're there asking us, do we want a change in our life? Are we tired of the way it's always been? And do we want to change? All we got to do is take your hand and get up. 
Father God, we worship you today. And we love you with all of our heart. And Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Just remember, you could be the one that stirs that water for somebody else. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.